So at the bottom of the planetary display, we have Shesha holding up the Earth. This is Shesh, the empowered incarnation. There we have Ananta speaking Bhagavatam to the four Kumaras. And above, the seven subterranean planets. Here we can see Jambudweep, the central island of uh, Bumandala. And Bharat Varsha is situated on the southern side of that. There's eight other Varshas with Ilavrata Varsha in the center various supporting mountains with uh, large trees upon them, described in Srimad Bhagavatam. In the very center of Alavrata Varsha is Mount Meru, a golden mountain. Atop Mount Meru are the cities of important demigods, Lord Brahma in the center, the eight Dikpalas in the cardinal directions and sub-directions. Moving out, we can see the broader Bhumandala, seven concentric islands and oceans surrounding them. The seventh of these islands is Pushkaradweep. On that island is Manasotra mountain, and on the mountain there is various cities of demigods such as Indra. Out further is Loka Loka mountain. These large elephants stand atop Loka Loka mountain to balance Bumandala. Outside of Loka Loka mountain is Aloka Varsha, which is dark. The rays of the sun and the other luminaries extend up to Loka Loka mountain. On Manasotra mountain here on Pushkaradweep, the sun travels above this mountain at the southernmost point of its annual orbit. Above Bumandala is Bhuvarloka, which is the residence of the Charanas, Siddhas, Yakshas, Gandharvas. And above there is Swargaloka, beginning from the sun and extending up to the pole star Dhruvaloka. This is the moving part of the planetary display. Here we can see the sun and the moon moving in their chariots. The chariots are being drawn by horses moving in the anticlockwise direction, but they're traveling with the wheel of time moving in the clockwise direction faster, so it looks as if they're moving backwards. Above them are the zodiac of stars, more planets, and another realm of stars. So here we can see everything moving with the Kala Chakra, circumambulating the axis that connects Mount Meru with Dhruvaloka. Above these planets, we come to the planet of the seven sages, the Saptarshi. You can see them here, they're commonly known as the Big Dipper, and then Dhruvaloka, the pole star. On the ocean of milk situated there, Kshiradakshaya Vishnu, who is the Paramatma within everyone's heart, he resides on Anantashesh. Moving up beyond there, we have Mahaloka, Janaloka, Tapaloka, and Satchaloka. In this video, we haven't included many of the details for there, but on Mahaloka, Janaloka, Tapaloka, we have residences of the Lord, such as Lord Varaha, Lord Vamana, and so on. Here's Brahmaloka, and on Brahmaloka, we also have a form of the Lord, Gabadakshay Vishnu, as the Sahasra Shirsha Purush. Beyond there is the seven coverings of the universe, earth, water, fire, etc. And outside of the universes is the abode of Lord Shiva, Shiva Loka. There he resides eternally. Beyond Shiva Loka, we come to Maha Vishnu. Karana Dakshay Vishnu with innumerable universes that have emanating from the pores of his transcendental body. Here you can see him being served by Rama Devi. Then we come to the Brahma Jyoti, the effulgence of the Lord's transcendental body. Penetrating through the Brahma Jyoti, we come to the Vaikuntha planets. We're showing 24 planets of the Vaikuntha realm in this model. The Lord with four arms is holding the conch, disc, club, and lotus and the various combinations of those four make 24. Then we come to Goloka Vrindavan. Here we can see Radha Madhava, but we'll also be showing the other primary Rasas, Krishna with the cowherd boys, Krishna being served, Krishna with Mother Yashoda. So this is an overview of the planetary display to be shown in the main dome of the temple.